Good day. So we've successfully got our aluminium factory up and running. And using all the bauxite in the world, we're producing 2,280 aluminium sheets per minute. Now that we've had time to troubleshoot the system, we've come up with a number of solutions to the problems we we're running into. And in this video, I'm going to explain how this whole factory works, the problems we encountered, and the methods we use to solve them. And hopefully, some of the techniques that we've used might be helpful to you. But before we move on, as I've mentioned in other videos, we are designing our entire world to be accessible without using any mods. And with that in mind, I would like to showcase this factory using a hypertube tour. And then, once that's done, I will be using flying to more effectively move around the factory in order to explain all the processes with ease. All right, before we go too much further, uh, it would seem that my buddy Fry here from America is not too happy with the way that Aussies and most of the rest of the world pronounce the word aluminium. So I think I might just have to check the almighty Google. All right, here we are. How to pronounce aluminium. Let's click this. Aluminium. 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 Okay, cool. All right. Well, since we're down here, I'll just quickly have a look at the uh, type of numbers we're using here. Oh, yep. Meters. Okay. The metric system. Ah, that's interesting. Cool. All right. Well, let's crack into it. 
Alright, so let's get on with the explanation of how all this works. So starting down here in the water farm, we are getting 8,000 water per minute from this place. Uh, we use 8,000 per minute from here, and then we use 3,000 per minute from recycled water, which I'll show in a minute, and that gives us 11,000 water per minute. Just before I leave here, I'll show these micromanaged power poles which actually came in really handy because they look cool and also made it a lot easier to apply power to all these water extractors. So the 8000 water comes across here and comes up this big pumping towel up to the height that it's needed and then gets pumped into the main building and as you can see from these indicators here all the water is being used. So that's the water. So we'll come back down to the first floor here. Uh, we decided to leave it open because of the look it gave the place. The top floor is open, the bottom floor is open, and the middle two floors of the refineries have been enclosed by walls. So the machines down here are just these constructors making silica from the quartz. The quartz that we have coming in is two pure nodes and two normal nodes of quartz. That's making one third of the silica we need and the other third of the silica we need is coming from the recycled silica from the refineries. Now I'm not going to go through every single little number that every machine does. I'll just go through the big stats and if you want to find out all the details, I'll be doing uh, a more detailed explanation of all the numbers in the description. So we're using five normal nodes of coal here, three normal nodes of copper, and we're using 7,800 bauxite, which is all the bauxite in the map. That is a combination of pure, impure, and normal nodes. They're all getting merged through this storage merger, which loops them together in a loop. And then on the other side here, uh, what we did have, which was one of the things we had to fix, uh, which I did, uh, was a whole bunch of mergers and splitters. Um, my plan was that they would back up the lines and work themselves out. That did not go to plan, so mistakes were made. So we've simplified it, and now what we're using is a smart splitter on each line, and they go overflow into the one next to it on the left, and it goes down to the left to the left to the left, all the way down to this far left one, and that overflows into the far right one. So it's looped with overflow splitters. Now this has been running for at least three hours, and as you can see, all the lines are nicely balanced, unlike before. Sweet, so that is the bauxite. I'll cover that up with glass. I just left it open to show how we've done the inside of that. Um, this water pipe just here is how we solved the issue of the water backing up the system. And I'll explain that when we go up to the floor. But basically, it gets taken down to this train station and taken away by a train and goes to a wet concrete plant and gets crushed. All right, the finished product, 2,280 aluminium sheets. They go down into the train station. Uh, when the train station backs up, which it has because we're not using it in the main base yet, these overflow splitters here will send all the sheets into these crushers that we've got set up. Uh, the little animation you can see happening there, like a glitch, is because we have shrunk these down a little bit with Micromanager just to get them underneath this roof here. Alright, so that's about it for this bottom floor. We can move up to the next floor. Alrighty, should have a little hole in the wall here, which I don't. Uh, so I'll just make one. 
Alright, so the bauxite comes up to this floor and it's going to go into the first floor of refineries. It's going to mix with the water which has come up from the water farm that we just seen and that is going to make the aluminium solution or it's actually called alumina solution. Alumina solution. Right. So the byproduct from this is the silica. All these refineries on this floor will merge all their byproduct silica into one section and do one third of the silica we need. And then the other two thirds, which you can see here, is what we're making with the quartz. One of the issues that we ran into when we first started this up, because not all the machines were running at 100% yet, was that the silica was backing up. If this silica backs up completely, we'll no longer be able to make the solution and the whole system will shut down. So we added in these smart splitters just here with the overflow function. When we first put them in, they were really overflowing a lot into these crushers. But now, as you can see, it's hardly overflowing any because the system is running quite efficient. So that's how we solved the problem of the silica backing up the system. So now this will sit here. It's probably not even needed, but we'll leave it here as a fail safe. So that's this floor fairly well explained. The uh, alumina solution goes out to the east there and goes into the eastern pumping station to go up to the next floor. Go up to the next level now. Go in this little door here. So in this level, we're using the alumina solution and coal to make the scrap and the byproduct is water. So we're making roughly 15,000 scrap per minute, which is why we have so many belts here needed to take all of it up to the next level. With the byproduct of the water, this was one of the main problems that we were having and it's probably one of the main problems that anyone has when they're setting up a system like this with aluminium. The way we had it set up is that all the excess water would come down here and come down to the bottom level and feed into this section of refineries which is separated by the gap and this whole section of refineries down this end will get their water from the recycled water from this level. Now what was happening is, even if you do the maths correctly, and uh, a lot of people have said they have the same issue, for whatever reason, and because pipes are a bitch to deal with, these lines will back up eventually, even if you're slightly not using it enough. So when these back up, these lines will back up. And then eventually, this here will back up. If either of these back up, the whole system will shut down. Okay, so how did we end up dealing with it? Well, we still wanted to prioritize the refineries down that end there. So they will always get priority for this excess fluid, this excess water. Then when they back up and start backing up this system here, only then will it overcome what we've done here because we've put it up high and used the, uh, the assistance of the gravity of the fluid. So whatever's lowest will get priority and then whatever's highest will be overflow. So all five of these lines, oops, all five of these production lines have the same setup and they all link to each other and the overflow, which is not much at all, will come down here. So when you consider that there's 3000 water in this system and we're only using one pipe to get rid of the excess and the maximum a pipe can have is 300, then 
you can see how efficient it is actually running and we've just got it there as a failsafe. You can even come out here and actually look at the pipe, what's taking the water off the system and it's not even full or backing up. So we're barely even taking 300 out of it, not even that at all. It's just there as a failsafe and it has been working quite well. So that's fixed that issue. So all the aluminium scrap will then come over here. And go up to the next level. Alright. What we had to do with these belts was make a lot of belts into a few less belts. So we had to load balance that. We ended up building this reasonably large load balancing building, but it ended up looking pretty neat and it looks pretty cool. Uh, the rest of the load balancing, the final stage, happens outside the building. Um, it will go into this tower and then go down and into all the machines it needs to go to. So we still managed to keep it all 90 degree corners and nice flat square OCD friendly belts. Cool. So this is where the silica ends up. Over here we have the recycled silica, these four lines. And over here we have the silica made from quartz, which is eight lines. There's a little bit of fail safe here with the smart splitter overflows just at the final stage here and then it comes into our foundries which are here we have three rows of 16 two of these rows get the silica from the quartz and one of these rows gets the silica from the recycled silica now the foundries are the most efficient way to use the scrap okay however you have to use silica so out of the 15,000 roughly 15,000 scrap per minute we're making 12,000 of that is getting used in the foundries now we couldn't use any more foundries because we did run out of silica but that's no worries because we did want to use the pure recipe in these smelters. Now these smelters are slightly less efficient when it comes to using the aluminium scrap. However, there is a trade-off. So, not as efficient with the scrap, but a pro is that you don't have to use any quartz. And quartz is a slightly rare resource in the game. Another pro is that these are quite compact and simple to use. So then we come over here and we get all our aluminium ingots and they come down this conveyor bus all the way down here and then get split off into the final stage of assembly which is these assemblers which there's four rows of and 76 in total but before they go in there they need to also get combined with copper so with the copper, we decided not to use the pure recipe because copper is one of the resources that's quite abundant in the game and we didn't need that much of it. So we just slapped down a bunch of smelters and made basic copper setup. So we have three lines of copper getting load balanced into four lines of copper for the four rows of assemblers here. The assemblers then use the aluminium ingots and the copper to make the aluminium sheets. Now all the sheets getting made come down these four lines here. And then make their way 
across into this pumping building and then they come down down here and across and into the train station and this is back to where we started so that is a basic rundown of how this factory works so hopefully some of you found this helpful uh, I will try answer any other questions in the comments and yeah that's about it I'll catch you later